happy to have Paul Kalkau with us. He's visiting uh, for the rest of the week, uh, so you can uh, talk to him. Uh, he will leave on Friday morning, so if you want to discuss with Paul, please do it before Thursday. And we are taking him for dinner on Thursday as well, so if you are interested in joining us, uh, let me know uh, so that we can have an accurate account. And uh, let me say a few words about Paul. Uh, so, <laughs> of course, he's a good friend. Uh, Paul um, started his uh, undergraduate uh, studies in France, in um, Lyon, and then continued at Marie Curie, where he got his uh, diploma. And he also got his master's degree there, and he spent some time at Oxford for an internship. Then he went for Saclay uh, for his PhD studies under the supervision of uh, Edmond Yanko and Gregory Soyes. And uh, then he went to BNL for a relatively short postdoc of less than two years. And uh, he joined uh, uh, Nance as a permanent staff uh, last year. And Paul has done the, uh, a significant amount of research in, in the physics of jet quenching, uh, which is one of the topics he will discuss today, but also to the physics of small x. And uh, we are, again, very happy to have you. And, uh, Please, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you for us all joining us. All right, so yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and for the nice introduction. So I will uh, will be discussing today uh, so search for signatures of uh, similar scattering physics in the quenching phenomenology. So it is uh, the title is too optimistic, but I will try to to highlight some uh, uh, recent improvements in our calculations and some observables that could be interesting for for this search in particular. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. So I, I will start with a brief introduction of. Uh, why we're interested in, uh, in the function of APT jets. And I will also discuss uh, briefly the, the, the main background of this uh, theoretical study uh, of the object uh, evolved in the, in the presence of uh, the dense QCD medium. And uh, then I will uh, come to the main two points of this, uh, of this talk, which are uh, the first implementation of uh, singular scattering effects into the, the overall PQCD picture for jet evolution in dense QCD medium. So this is work in progress with my two uh, former, former advisors and my uncle and Louis Soyer. And I will also discuss uh, uh, hot topic nowadays, which are cell structure observables and also this uh, recently uh, uh, advocated observables, which are energy energy correlators. And I will try to argue that they could, they could also be relevant for the search of the similar scattering effects in, in jet function. <coughs> All right, so let me start with uh, the basics. So jets are a collimated spray of particles. They look like that in what they call the uh, experiments, between plus and minus uh, annihilation collisions. And you see that when you go from a simple colliding system to more complicated background environments, then it becomes very messy with a lot of particles, a lot of background. It's, it's really complicated for experimentalists to, to isolate just from background in this kind of uh, a, a collisions. 
So from the theory side, uh, jets in, in the vacuum, so I will talk about vacuum, we talk about jet producing the vacuum, when, especially in, in P plus minus or PP collisions because the vacuum is low. And these kind of objects are very well understood from first QCD principles, so with a high degree of precision, both on the analytical and also in the numerical side via well developed uh, Monte Carlo part of shower. And for the purposes of uh, understanding the quadrant plasma, they can be used as a benchmark for the understanding of the medium, and, but also nuclear effects, either in EA, EA, and also of course in AA collision, which will be the main uh, uh, that I will discuss today, AA collision. So, so I will, uh, I will, uh, I mean, ooh, during this talk, I will mine a very simple uh, scenario. Uh, so of uh, basically two hard parts, patterns uh, which propagate uh, back to back in the transverse plane. Uh, and so in the vacuum, they develop a pattern shower, which is uh, eventually measured as a bunch of hadrons. And in the quadrant plasma, uh, there are a lot of stuff which happen during the propagation of this uh, pattern shower within the medium. And in particular, the, the, the modification, the energy loss, Modification of the fragmentation itself uh, is a well-known phenomenon, uh, which is uh, commonly referred to as jet punch in the quadrant plasma. Okay, so uh, if we uh, have a step back and try to uh, understand what's, uh, maybe what are the main uh, consequences of the presence of the quadrant plasma as seen in experiments, uh, I, I would emphasize two points. So of course, there are many uh, uh, experimental signatures of the modification of jets, but in this talk, uh, I will mostly discuss two. Um, so first, and it's uh, the most obvious one, jets lose energy in the QGP, and you can see that, uh, for instance, in this Atlas plot, so this is uh, the ratio of the you know, cross-section for producing jets in AA divided by PP as a function of PT, and the, the black dot here is actually for in the inclusive case. So you measure all jets uh, within uh, some centrality, uh, in a given centrality class and with a given uh, rapidity cut. And you see that they are indeed suppressed because the RAA is smaller than one. And this suppression occurs over a wide range of PT, even at very large PT. So that's what I am referring to when I say jet lose in the QGP. But very recently, uh, experimentalists have been able to, to go a bit uh, uh, deeper in the understanding of this black curve here by looking at what happens if you correlate this energy loss with the substructure of the jets. I will define more precisely what the substructure means, but here, roughly speaking, we can also try to understand what is the, the functional form of this suppression as you vary the typical the angular uh, uh, distance uh, between hard substructure in a, in a jet. And you see that there is a strong correlation. And it's not trivial how the suppression goes as this uh, uh, typical radius in, within the jet uh, increases. So you see that the, the larger uh, this typical radius of even substructure in the jet increases, the more you have a suppression. And uh, you can also see that by looking at the cross-section differential in this uh, RG or theta G angle, and you see that indeed at large theta G, so this is the least measurement, at large theta G you have a stronger suppression and you have an announcement of uh, small theta G jets in the middle. So this, this property is now uh, referred to as nar the narrowing effect of jets in the medium. So in some sense, the medium acts as a filter towards the jets which are narrower than in PP collision. And okay, so this this is uh, the, 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 the experimental plot that I wanted to discuss, and I will come back to these plots later in my talk. But before I, I will uh, try to uh, to highlight the main feature of the calculation uh, that I will be uh, discussing for the rest of this talk, and this is what I call now the jet metric curve for jet evolution in the dense medium. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a picture which is based on uh, a well-defined uh, PQCD approximation for the vacuum part of the shower. So we, we rely on the, on 
the resummation of the leading uh, double logarithmic corrections from high order of the radiative eff effects. And um, so, in a, so, in a nutshell, uh, I, 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 draw, I draw this cartoon to highlight the, the main stages of the shower. So, when the hard parton propagates inside the medium, so this, you can see the, this uh, yellow box as a medium of given size L. So, the hard partons will first trigger a cascade of, uh, of vacuum like emissions, the, the red uh, partons here. And these emissions will occur very fast. Uh, because the formation time is of order of the energy divided by kt square, and kt square, as you been in the shower, is typically of the order of the virtuality of the hard process. It's a very short formation time. But then, at some time, at some point, this uh, so the formation time decreases uh, in the logarithmic approximation from the hard process to some medium scale, and so the, when the, the, the kt uh, of the of the emission kt squared becomes comparable to the medium scale, which is q hat times the formation times of the, of the emission. So this is basically, uh, so q hat is, gives you the average transverse momentum parameter of time acquired by a parton, by a parton when, it, when it propagates to the medium. So when q hat times the formation times becomes the order of kt squared, then you become dominated by medium induced processes. So you, the, the vacuum light cascade becomes the medium induced one, so, so the green on emissions, and these emissions they don't follow the well-known angular ordering uh, 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 term of the cascade. So they can happen at every angle, especially at large angles. And that's why in this cartoon I you see that the medium induced emissions, which are triggered by the collision with the medium, they can occur at, at large angle and they drive the energy loss effect. But then, of course, you also have vacuum like emissions, which have a formation times much larger than the size of the medium. So they are basically not sensitive to it. And they are represented by these blue uh, uh, patterns here. And because of the of phenomenon, which is known as the color decoherence, uh, when, the, when the dipole is created inside the medium, because of the multiple scattering with the medium constituents, the parent dipole, so for instance, if you look at uh, this uh, um, blue and pattern, uh, it, it is limited by this dipole, but this, this dipole will lose its color, its color coherence when uh, propagating through the medium. So as a consequence, the emission of the first, the first emission outside of the medium can have any angle. So it is not constrained by angular ordering. And that's why in this cartoon, it has, a large, it has an angle which is larger with respect to its parent than the previous emission. So basically, we have this factorization between three stages, one angular order of vacuum like cascade inside the medium, which happens very fast. Then we have this, all these sources, the red sources, trigger a bunch of medium use radiations, uh, the green uh, cascade. And then finally, all these emissions, they eventually uh, again decay outside of the medium until they adonize and they, they are finally detected in the experiment. Okay, so we can also uh, represent uh, this, uh, this cascade in uh, what uh, uh, we call now the moon plane diagram. So this is uh, basically uh, the, the phase space for, ra for radiating um, uh, either uh, mostly vacuum-like emissions in the presence of the medium. So when I refer to the modification of the phase space for the vacuum-like emissions, I'm precisely talking about this phase space. So in the vacuum, the, 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 you, you would feel all the phase space above the atomization line here. So, so in the x-axis, you have the energy of the emission, which decreases in this direction when you, uh, along the cascade. And when uh, and on the y-axis, you have the angle of the emission, which is also decreasing because of angular ordering. And in the vacuum, you basically feel uniformly this phase space above the atomization line. It's not exactly uniform because we have the random decoupling and uh, beyond uh, double log corrections, but uh, it's like double log accuracy is uh, uniform. Uh, you feel uniformly the, the, the phase space. And in the medium, there is through the, factor, through the factorized picture that I 
uh, described with a cartoon, you, all, you, you get uh, this kind of uh, two lines. So the formation of the TF equal L line, which is this blue line, and also the left the line where uh, the formation time of the emission becomes comparable, comparable to the mediuminous formation time. So all the very fast vacuum-like emissions they occur in this red uh, area, and all the uh, uh, blue, uh, all the emission outside the medium they occur in the in the blue area. And mediuminous processes they will fill the phase space in this black region. Okay, of course, if you have uh, questions, don't uh, I mean, feel free to to interrupt me, <laughs> interrupt me anytime. So it's a uh, so now I see, I mean, this uh, this picture as, uh, especially in this, in this talk, and I will uh, show uh, plots for cell ball, I see it as a kind of toy model to understand some qualitative features in the, of a given of cell ball that you can measure in heavy and collisions. But it's a toy model because it has many caveats. So um, first, it's, it's valid only in the leading log approximation for the big vacuum night emissions. So, uh, there are corrections beyond this double log approximations that need to be computed. So that would be uh, that's also something that I have in mind. Uh, also, uh, so related to this first point, so vacuum light emissions, uh, the way they are described and especially encoded in the, the pattern shower, is valid only in the collinear limit. So soft wide angle emissions uh, in, the, in, the, in the associated Monte Carlo pattern shower are not properly included. And this is one of the reasons why we so observable cannot really be computed in this framework because they are very sensitive to soft wide angle emissions. So I, I, I cannot also, uh, I mean, the, the, the geometry of the collision is very simple. It's always uh, either Greek or longitudinal expanding medium. So we cannot really uh, address the centrality of the, of the, of the collisions and dependence of the jet quantum centrality. So there are no medium response is, there is no medium response in the implementation as well. And there is also no single R scattering effects until very recently. And this is what, I, what I'm going to discuss now. Because implicit in the previous picture was this occurring approximation. So the formation time of a medium used emission was assumed to be much larger than much larger than the minimum pass inside the medium, but also much smaller than the typical uh, size of the medium. So in terms of energy, we were assuming that the energy of a medium used emission is much smaller than the uh, omega C scale that we will define in the next slide. So omega C, which is a maximal energy that uh, medium used emission can have, yields from multi multiple soft scatterings, but it, it will be also much larger than the, the beta high frequency. So uh, these two approxima approximations, I will try to, to relax them in the, in the Following up of this discussion. So even though it's uh, it's a toy model, it by is, the way, um, yes, this vacuum like uh, emission, you you just uh, write in your own. I, I guess it's a sort of monocolor. Yes, you write you write your own monocolor. Yes, so it's, uh, it's yeah, because using PPL. No, because so we could have and like, actually PPL contains more, so it goes beyond this uh, strict collinear limit that I uh, I I've been referring to. Um, but uh, since we have this uh, phase space modification, it was easier to code uh, uh, an angular order cascade uh, constrained by this, uh, this red line here. So the PTR, uh, PTR doesn't have uh, this kind of line in the, in the code. So it, it, all the pattern shower, it's a formula in terms of dipoles, but all the dipoles build this phase space above some cut. And then the, there is some organization. Well, for the vacuum like emission, you could have used PTR, but enforce your own restriction, right? Yes, we could have. Yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what if we and want to go beyond this. the soft wide angle emission problem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, but, uh, I mean, you know, Gregory is working on this uh, transcale project where they go even beyond this uh, PTR uh, say, framework because PTR is not strictly speaking valid at the uh, next leading log accuracy. So, in principle, uh, I would say the more robust framework to now compute, uh, say, uh, multiplicity and uh, jet properties in PP or in plus minus collisions would be to, to use the next leading log of the pattern shower. 
And of course, at some point, we would like to embed that, embed this type of pattern shower in the, in the medium using this type of uh, space constraints. Right. So, yeah, so it's a toy model, but it has, uh, can give qualitative uh, uh, results that can compare to experiments. So, so in the first, uh, uh, one of the first slides of the talk, I mentioned two observables, so the suppression, the RAA uh, modification factor, and also the RAA differential in the, this RG angle. And you see that this model can qualitatively reproduce both the suppression for inclusive jets, but also this narrowing effect. The fact that jets with a large angle are more suppressed than jets with a small uh, RG angle. And in, the, in, this, in this model, it's mainly due to the fact that when a jet has a small, large RG angle, so RG is, again, the typical size of a house structure beside jets. So this type of jets uh, have many sources that which are produced inside the medium. And since it has many sources for energy loss, they lose more energy. So they are more suppressed as compared to jets which don't, don't have this type of hard substructure uh, at large angles within the jet. What's magic about R sub G equals like 0.07? What's on, what uh, here? Yeah. Okay, so that's a, uh, what happens here. So the, what the scale which dictates this transition is given by the, the, the coevance angle. So it's the, the, the minimal angle that, uh, that which can be resolved by the medium uh, within the evolution of the jet. So it's it's given parametrically by one over the square root of qi times l cube. And uh, so here you have a very sharp transition because in our framework, L is a, is a, is a, is a fixed parameter. Uh, it's like four or five Fermi, whatever. But uh, since we don't have any sense of uh, realistic geometry, uh, it's, uh, it gives a very sharp transition. But in principle, L can fluctuate. So there is no reason for a given jet, or for two jets in two different events to, to follow the, exactly the same path length. Uh, so by uh, including a more realistic uh, description of, of the geometry, we expect that this kind of sharp transition, which happens at uh, theta c, so here it's theta c divided by r, by the way, um, I think, or maybe not. I don't remember. Um, anyway, this kind of sharp transition uh, should be uh, uh, smooth. Uh, smooth. Similar to the following barber space, so if you like to what uh, you guys do in this uh, energy incorporator. If you multiply as PT, so that could give you both whatever you were in distribution, right? So, so in the sense of the transition energy here you put there is actually could be universal for different PT. It, yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's theta C, the coherence angle doesn't depend on the, on yeah. the jet PT. So that's what I mean. So if you put a different PT region, on the same prop, you have found a similar behavior like what you guys found for the energy in the world, right? So you, you prod instead of the RG, it, instead of the RG, but you prod the PT times RG. So you could put a different PT uh, uh, data on the same prop. PT C works on a splitting on the jet. Uh, I mean, in, in a thorough calculation, or yeah, it's, it's a property of right. even splitting. Yes. That's why it's independent of jet PT, which is a matter of what distribution of splittings you have for a given selection of jet PTs. Right. Oh, you mean the resolution? Okay. So then you put a different PT will will not in the same curve. Uh, the PT of the jet is not really relevant. What is relevant is the PT of the radiators or of the object that then splits. So I have some more questions. So, so, so my question related to PT. So my question not directly. Okay, so so my question that if you have different PT range, you will now have to be now have on top of PT other or what? Yeah, well, will the transition will change or not? That's my question. I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, the data, uh, because they have the different uh, PT beam, uh, PT selection here for at least in the Atlas data, I think it's uh, more or less it's very mildly sensitive to, to PT. Okay. 
abandon your calculation. This is not only no sense. This is the only case when you identify the splitting with 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 angle, right? And with the jet. Subject, I mean, you they, they are, this is subject, right? Yes, so this is the only thing right. when so you can identify the subject in this individual pattern splitting. It's one is given with no scenario. Okay, if so this uh, this will be different compared to the energy in the correction. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very different actually. Mm -hmm. In fact, the energy energy correction has really no resemblance to the split, the subject speed. So yeah, are yeah, supposed yeah. to see this transition yeah. also in the data? Yeah. 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 Because that was, any end already is only for the final part, not the speed, so. Well, I mean, in the data there is a transition. It's just, it's a smear transition that uh, there is a... Right. Yeah. You see the transition, I see a smooth. <laughs> 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 I think what they're doing is very interesting because they introduce a scale. They introduce the scale. I mean, scale has to be. Yeah, that's fine, but it's not born under the data, at least for my old eyes. <laughs> Even if you add smearing, so I've been staring at this while you're talking, which <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to do. Yep. Um, it looks to me like your transition actually happens at larger RG than where the data prints down. So I, I figure if it's right. smeared, then the, maybe the middles should line up. No, but I think, I think the bottom line is this kind of. I think something has been uh, not have been, have been not uh, clear enough because you know I'm speaking about a toy model uh, with qualitative uh, uh, understanding of the data, but I don't claim I control everything in this uh, in this uh, in the transition where exactly I can I can say in the theory it occurs at a given scale, but it's true that uh, it completely misses the data. Uh, here and the transition occurs also a bit too uh, well, I, late. I would, I would I think, translate it in a different way that the data are telling you that the, the transition should be at somewhat smaller RG. Yes. Yeah. And so that maybe you learned something already even from the toy model. So I have a, I agree. Yes. I have a question. That the, the, the main question for me is how do I relate theta c to the medium property? Yeah, so it's the two, I mean, parametrically, it's just one over the square root of QR times LQ. There you go. So that's, 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 a that's why it's in formal quantity. Yes. Learning about this transition. Yeah, learning exactly. About the but, but, yeah. So, again, uh, since in this calculation, all these parameters are fixed, I don't think it's, uh, I mean, QR can fluctuate uh, uh, given by time. It's not a fixed quantity a priori. Uh, and also, L, the, the size property of the is not fixed as well. So, indeed, I think we can learn from uh, where this, this transition occurs and the shape of this transition uh, from the data and we try to improve on the model. But I think this, this type of refinement, I go after the list I gave yeah. in the beginning of my talk, which is, I think, we cannot claim to understand. Uh, also, this uh, this uh, this curve, but you don't really control the PP very well. So. Okay, so, since we were already in, on this process, so I just want to add a comment. So the curve we showed before, this one, with this infamous Ruan's curve, is actually goes to data too. So there's a two or three curves there. So one thing Phoenix uh, has suggested that you 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 could explain this phenomenon just basically say that all the ground just has been Noted on. Mm -hmm. So you only left as a cocktail. So because cocktail always have a narrow uh, yes. RG. So that also could be explained. This data. effect is, in, this <laughs> effect, this, you know, this effect is also there in this calculation. So on top of the effect you are referring to, the fact that the uh, gluon jets are being faster than ground jets. Yeah. And uh, then CMS claims something different about the uh, oh, selection yeah. bias, which is re might be related to. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember we also compared the same. So, I, I think we should let him move on. I'm yeah. kind of holding my fire on this point. I do want to comment. I mean, this, this so called narrowing you said it's you know the immediate action is a filter. Mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective, it's an artifact of putting in a PT cut. Yes. So you, you keep everything fixed. You keep the tone fixed. You keep the PT cut fixed. And then you say what survives. Well, any mechanism, any mechanism, literally, I think, that broadens a jet is going to produce this. Apparent narrowing because it throws, you know, if it, if it, if the quenching broadens the jet, it throws it preferentially out of the bin. So it's a completely generic phenomenon. 
you know, you can call it a filter, you can call many things, but you know, well, you know, my point, you know, so I think the, the way, the way really to learn from the data is not just to look at one PT threshold, but actually to see how this thing evolves mm -hmm. as you change the PT threshold. So the stuff that's thrown out of this bin maybe appears in the bin below or maybe appears way down the bottom. And so it's actually the, uh, the threshold dependence of these phenomena, which, which, which must be the most discriminating because I think just looking at one of these plots has limited information. But there's just a brief comment. So for Paul Camorola, please. Yeah, it's quick. It's a short comment. So, so Peter, Peter you, you leaped over many things, uh, actually, when the chat brought us. This observable is really selecting a particular kinematics of the split. Yeah. So it's about, again, radiator inside those chats. So what I think we should do, be doing, not comparing as a function of chat PT, but as a function of radiator. So the object that actually splits into one to two. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to move to the... So now you finish the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> now they will go quickly. Your, your flights the... Friday morning, you said? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to include the... And this, within this picture, uh, similar scattering index. So I will mostly focus on you know, the second stage of the, of the pattern shower, which is this minimus cascade, where so far only... Uh, where the minimus, minimus emissions were treated only within the multiples of scattering approximation. So, of course, there are also uh, approximations uh, in, behind this, uh, this, this implementation of singular scattering effects. But I think since uh, these emissions are, uh, say, order alpha S effects, rare, rare, rare events, uh, it is okay to, in, to implement them in the minimus cascade and not, uh, for instance, in the Fashion like cascade inside the medium. Although we could also do that uh, uh, in, in the end. So I'm saying that because I, now I will mainly focus on the, the second state of the cascade, the minimus one, which was uh, represented by uh, green uh, nuance in the, in the cartoon of the, the second slide. And I will also very briefly mention how the singular scattering uh, uh, emissions. Uh, affects uh, the phase space for vacuum emissions, the, the phase space that I drew before. But yeah, now I will mostly focus on the medium use cascade. And what was done before, so basically, is this medium use cascade, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a way to solve the Monte Carlo uh, simulation. Uh, this uh, turbulent cascade equations, which is, uh, uh, so here D of G, DG is the number of gluon is a given of fraction of energy divided by the energy of the living particle Ex uh, as a function of time. So when the hard patterns enter inside the medium, uh, it can radiate via medium <laughs> emissions. So now all these gluons are medium used emissions, and they trigger uh, a branching process uh, with a rate, which is given by the LPM rate here. And at the end, you want to count uh, the number of uh, gluons, the inclusive number of gluons, with a given uh, energy fraction X, uh, after a time t equal to l. So the second stage of the, of the pattern shower that, I, uh, that I've been using to produce the plots that we were discussing before, they basically implement this, this equation, but the, 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 there is also an approximation to uh, simulate the angle of the emissions inside the cascade. So what we did was we implement a Gaussian broadening of the minimum used emission while they propagate over a distance <laughs> delta t within the medium. And this Gaussian broadening, of course, it is valid only within the multiple soft scattering approximation. We know that if you include a hard scattering uh, uh, with a medium constituent, you also have a one over kt to the fourth tail. So this Gaussian approximation is not valid when kt squared is much larger. Than... Do, you miss, do you miss a minus sign there? Uh, yeah, sorry, the minus sign. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, sorry. Otherwise, the physics would look a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this this was done. This was done in the, in the first version of the pattern shower, and this this is how the fragmentation function, as uh, a function of the energy, looks like. So here I just shoot a gluon with a high PT, uh, 200 GV within a brick of a size L, and I count the number of parts and with a given energy in a cone of an angle of 0.4. So here there is no vacuum-like emissions, just medium-used emissions, which are uh, 
committed to this branching process. So you see two uh, peaks. So the first peak is a remnant of the leading particle. And uh, since this leading particle has uh, emitted a lot, of, a lot of particles, there is also uh, a softer guys in fragmentation function. But there is also there is not an infinite number of soft gluons because we also impose uh, a cone. So all the very, very soft emissions, they go out of the dead cone via uh, the broadening. So that's why at some point at uh, the scale, which is given by this scale here, which depends on the jet radius, uh, the number of gluons particles inside the jet starts to increase. So there is also an artifact here, which is related to the single heart scattering effect that we want to implement. Here, since the LPM rate is valid only up to this omega C scale, which is true at L squared parametrically, there is a sharp cutoff in the cascade, and that's why here there is this uh, unphysical behavior, non uh, continuous uh, behavior of the fermentation function, just because we cut uh, mid minus emissions above this omega C scale. So there is also an important scale which is related to energy loss. So the typical energy uh, uh, loss of such a jet uh, to the medium is given by the, the branching scale, which is the scale at which this LPM rate becomes of order one. And it's simply given, again, parametrically by alpha squared times uh, the half scale omega c. When you say soft growth uh, outside to the cone, uh, quantitatively, is that, does that depend on the cone size, or does it not matter by like, cone size, one is still the same? So I mean, what is the typical? What is what are the typical angle of the soft gloss if they so, are, have to go outside to the cone? Right. So it's given. So it depends on the energy. And it's basically, for a given energy, you can, uh, if you solve the equation for theta uh, for given energy here, you get the typical angle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how, how have you estimated what's the typical angle? Uh, so are they really outside the cone? Most of them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so if you again, if you increase R, uh, so to, to, to start, uh, see, you, you, what you will see something like that. So you start recovering, uh, so the peak will go down, and you will add more and more soft gluons inside the fragmentation function. Mm -hmm. I think what you want is the, is the number of weighted uh, energy integral, so you know the total energy flux inside it. That tells you what the energy loss is. Yeah, and this, and typically this energy loss is given by this scale. I think I should get right. Be good to when you show these things. It'd be good to get a sense of you know it's outside of coin point point four point six. What's the relative energy transform? Yeah, that's that's, that's not one thing that we can compute. Uh, yeah. Right. So this is for the multiple subscattering approximation. And if we want to to implement uh, half scattering uh, effects, we have to solve a, a new a modified version of the previous equation. So I don't. Uh, so it's basically the same branching process. But now the fragmentation function also depends on the KT, and because and the, 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 the KT can, can be uh, acquired by a collision with uh, medium constituents, which transfer some momentum QT. So if you integrate over KT uh, this equation, you see that uh, thanks to this uh, one over this square factor, uh, you recover uh, exactly the, the previous equation, which was not integrated, over, which was integrated over KT, and this. The integral over kt of this term vanishes because the integral over kt of uh, this stuff is exactly zero. So what I want to say is that if you integrate over kt this equation, you recover uh, this equation here. But this equation is uh, better because it has, it keeps track of the kt dependence and it allows to deal with the collisions in a, in a more realistic way. So we don't have to rely on this Gaussian approximation anymore. So we can really sample branch and collision at the same time via uh, this, uh, this kernel for our emissions. So this is the equation what, that we now solve the Monte Carlo techniques. So this is what you call the scattering. Uh, the... Yes. Yeah. Your... Right. So when you when you solve this equation at each step, you have to decide if you do either branching or scattering with the medium for constituents. And uh, if you if you have a branching, you sample it via this. Uh, with this rate. So this is equivalent in a, in a, in a 
in the boss main question, you control oh, yeah, yeah. the boss uh, yeah. radial process and elastic scale. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's, very, it's, uh, it's also an effective yeah. equation which reduces to the, the equation which is solved by Martini, for instance. Uh, the only, I think the only difference is in the way the, the branching uh, are implemented. So and the, actually, it's a transition towards my, my, my slide. So in, this, in the previous equation, there, there are two QRs. One in the collision kernel here, uh, which is because basically it's proportional to the number of uh, scattering centers, but also in the branching uh, process itself. And so we want to, re in order not to have too many parameters in the, in the calculation, we want to relate the physical uh, microscopic flood parameter to the one which appears in the branching uh, in the emission rate. And this is done uh, by uh, this, uh, saying that Q at in the emission rate uh, is given by the, the, the average of the collision rate with QT squared. And typically, it has this uh, logarithmic behavior because C of QT uh, decreases like 1 over QT squared. Uh, sorry, 1 over QT to the 4 at the large QT. See. And so this, uh, this type of relation uh, allows us to to, uh, to, to relate the microscopic uh, q uh, value, which is really related to uh, thermal properties of the medium, to the q which appears in the branching rate. And there is uh, an energy dependence of this q because the typical transverse momentum scale at which you should evaluate this q is given by the kt of, the, of an emission, which is square root of q at omega. So you can also go beyond this type of equation by including uh, NLO corrections. So there is a lot of literature on this topic. Um, and also maybe to compare uh, the, the two, ver I mean, the, 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 the version of the code in which we were relying on the multiple soft scattering approximation in this uh, implementation, uh, we, we, we can uh, uh, we use this type, this type of matching relation where the QAT in the implementation without taking into account uh, the hard scattering effects is related to the q uh, in this new implementation at the branching scale, which is typical scale for energy loss. OK, so uh, there is uh, an issue with this equation, which, uh, it, which is related to uh, its, its infrared behavior. It's, it's kind of obvious, actually. So. Um, when the, 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 the time between two branchings becomes a further of the mean free pass, you don't have any collisions uh, to, to broaden the, 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 the emission. So, okay. gluons which are emitted, which are uh, which, uh, which crosses the medium, sorry, gluons which, gluons which propagate uh, over a very small, small distance between two branchings, they don't acquire any momentum. Uh, and when the formation time is smaller than the mean free pass, they remain inside the jet. And in the LPM regime, uh, this time is given by this uh, parametric estimate. So when the energy of the gluon is very small, they tend to artificially, artificially remain inside the jet. Cut. So there is no such uh, 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 reduction of the number of gluons at very small energy. And you can see that by when you solve the equation, so the red curve was with the Gaussian broadening, and the blue curve, for instance, is uh, with the new implementation, including the half scattering collision kernel. And you see that at very small omega, omega you get a huge number, and the, the, basically the distribution diverges. And this, this issue, I will discuss how to solve it. But on the other hand, if you look at the, the, the angle between uh, the leading pattern and the jet, you see that by including the hard scattering kernel, the more realistic one, which does not rely on the Gaussian approximation, you are able to sample, oh, sorry. you are able to, 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 yeah, to produce the one over kt to the fourth tail. So it's not again, it's not Gaussian anymore, but you have really a, a simulation of the hard scattering collisions. All right, so how to cure this artificial divergence? So as I said, it's related to the fact that when the cost, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, how do you cure it? You impose some kind of uh, here, yeah, yeah, oh, and, 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 and we can oh. discuss that now. So it's uh, you see, since it's related to the to the fact that the, when the energy is very small, 
there is no the, the permit the time between two branching is, is smaller than the mean free pass, so you don't have any collisions. It means that you you have uh, the the idea is to regulate the LPN tail, which is too strong, by the bit by query. Physically, so at some point you know that the LPN uh, uh, behavior one goes square root of omega. Uh, is wrong at some point. You don't. So the energy will become so small that we be close to the omega so the hyper hyper frequency. And in this regime, uh, you expect the branching rates not, not to be given by square root of q divided by omega, but by alpha divided by the mean free pass. So by this kind of uh, uh, analytic uh, continuation um, so interpolations, it's more precise to say interpolation, you. By, by including the beta alpha regime, you naturally cure the infrared singularity here. So now the, the microscopic parameter are the double mass and the, and the medium temperature. Your mean free pass depends on. Yes, it, it depends on the on the on the double mass and EQF mass. Okay, so yes. this is essentially come to the question here. So essentially, everybody essentially is yeah right. everybody the infrared color is by by screen mass. I agree that everybody does that, <laughs> but when you only for the better. When you when you it's, it's mathematically it's, it was uh, it's 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 a really an artifact of this equation which is not exactly like a Boltzmann equation because of the way uh, the, the branching rate uh, behaves with respect to the, to the collision and so on. So mm -hmm. it, in principle, there is you should you should use uh, a, a branching rate which is uh, one to one correspondence to the collision pair. And here it's, uh, we do some uh, yeah, with this analytic approximation. And this mismatch, uh, forget about the, the beta alpha regime. So you have to put it back at the end. That's yeah, I mean, if you if you consider the, the problem have some risk scattering, and then the risk scattering itself essentially, essentially is equivalent of gaining the bar screen mass. I mean, the, the bar screen mass is because of scattering. Yeah. OK, so uh, I was uh, there. And yes, yeah, the last uh, the last thing that we have included, uh, which is again related to uh, both single house gas ring physics and also how uh, the LPN uh, uh, spectrum behaves at large omega. Again, at large omega, uh, large energy, the LPN regime is not valid anymore, so it falls it falls too uh, rapidly to reduce the harmonic approximation. So you should instead use a GLV uh, uh, spectrum in this, in this domain. So the branching rate that we include in the new version of the, of the pattern shower both I mean, interpolates between uh, the omega bit regime regime here and the GLV tail. So that also captures the physics of uh, emission which are triggered by a half scattering. OK, so this is uh, how the is the final uh, fragmentation function looks like. So this is a blue curve. So now you see that uh, we have also uh, solved this, uh, I mean, improved on the description of this domain where we, we had this sharp cutoff, which was the physical at omega c. So now thanks to the smooth interpolation towards the GLV regime, we have the smooth transition between the peak of the leading particle and the soft gluons, which are emitted by, by LPM uh, uh, type of uh, abbreviations. And of course, for the angular distribution of the leading particle with respect to the jet, we see that we still control the, we still have this uh, one over k to the four uh, tail, which was the main uh, uh, goal of this, uh, this uh, new implementation. When you say leading particle relative to the jet, you mean the initial jet direction? Yes, so it's, it's, it's not something that you can measure, but it's not, it's not, 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 not observable. Of, of course, but in, in, in our case, it's a way to see that we have indeed included the, the thing that we will do. Of course, if you could, I mean, if you could measure a, that, uh, you, you would have it, thought it is a sort of coincidence measurement. We have an axis, and you can look at the yes. change in yes. yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So let not let me switch to uh, the, the observables. So first, uh, we need to benchmark uh, the parameter of the new code uh, because uh, now we have some. The, since we rely on the more microscopic description of the, of the, of the plasma, we have this by mass, we need to uh, find another part, the parameter which provides a reasonable description of the RA ratio. So all the plot I'm going to show 
uh, will be for this, uh, this uh, range of uh, this value of the parameters, uh, which gives a reasonable estimation of the suppression of jets in equations. All right, and then I will go back to the, this uh, some drop of travelable, and especially this uh, RG or theta G measurement. So let me now define it maybe more precisely. Uh, so what you do is you, when you have a jet, you decluster it, and as soon as you find a splitting which satisfies uh, this condition, so the, the momentum fraction which is larger than some z-cut, you select it and you measure the opening angle between the two subjects. You can also measure the KTG. And uh, so we wanted to see, so we have this uh, narrowing, so in, 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 uh, in green, oh, sorry, in red, uh, it's basically the same uh, uh, parameters than in the first, uh, uh, is the first plus that I showed that we were discussing the wrong condition, the very sharp condition, that, uh, so this is this condition here. Uh, but here, the, my point is that by, if we include a uh, single half seismic effect, what you would expect naively is that maybe you would have, you would have more uh, large TTG or large ATG uh, emissions. So you would expect an announcement between the red and the blue curve. And you see that you, you almost see anything. So it's, it's, and our understanding is that this type of observable is really dominated by uh, energy loss effects, uh, which are differential with respect to the TTG or the KTG. So you, it's, you don't see much on top of something which has a strong impact on the distribution. So it's a bit disappointing, but at least in our framework, we don't see much of uh, Molière type scattering uh, by looking at substructure of samples. At least then, not that one. Sorry? At least not that one. Yeah. Yes, on, at least that of sample, yes, yes. So with those kinematic cuts. With those kinematic cuts. These are very energetic jets. Well, I've okay. tried indeed by, uh, of uh, looking at uh, Smaller pit, jet with a smaller PT, so you, you did see a bit uh, more uh, uh, enhancement, which is uh, slightly larger, but it's not uh, enough convincing, at least to me, especially given that there are a lot of approximations yet this type of calculation to say, okay, this is a standard candle for uh, Molière scattering. All right, so at the same time, uh, with uh, other collaborators, we, we are interested in looking at uh, this uh, uh, energy energy collators. It's a very uh, fashion of syllable now. Um, so let me just define it uh, very briefly. So for a given jet, so it, I will discuss uh, energy 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 collator with jets. So not at the uh, full event level. So for a given jet, so you find all the pair of particles and you add the angle between this pair uh, to the so histogram and weighted by the energy of the, the product of the relative energy of the two uh, particles. Also in the vacuum, so this is the, typically the shape, the shape of the observable. At large theta, you have this uh, universal uh, slope, which is controlled by PQCD. And uh, at the small angle, you, you are sensitive to atomization physics, and the transition between the two regimes is uh, related to the lambda QCD. So this observable is, uh, has been uh, studied in various uh, contexts for many uh, co collision systems because it has this uh, very strong capability of pinning down specific angular scales which, are, which emerges from even uh, physical uh, model. So for instance, uh, say if you do small physics, you, you can certainly see the emergence of QS uh, in the energy energy correlator. So here, we, the, the, the goal is maybe to see if I see this kind of, uh, of, uh, of a scale. And uh, so if you play the game of, uh, as, I, as, I, as I was doing for the fragmentation function, you shoot a high PT gluon uh, in, in a medium, so without any hard scattering spectrum, so you don't have any bias effect, you just shoot a gluon. Uh, you don't have the colonization yet, right? No, no, no. That's yeah. why here this... Uh, this is a pure platonic. Yeah, pure platonic. Yeah. Here, of course, this is not... This uh, is, a, yeah, this I'm, I'm going to say that. Uh, in fact, this this falling off, this region, small X region, in fact, is not just part of physics. It's, uh, re it's also a perturbative phenomena. Essentially, it's, it's uh, from the independent emission of uh, many, many, many... Yes. When you yes. have a uh, branch... It's like it has to be, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, in fact, the colonization, in fact, we, we, we check this. 
the effect of harmonization, they are equivalent at large angle and small angle. They both uh, they shift like uh, uh -huh. they, okay, and, and, and correlate almost by equal amount. So yeah. this whole thing, this small angle is not a feature of harmonization. It's not. So it's just an accident. That, uh, this has to do with so the cutoff, the radiation. One radiation stopped. And I, I, it, my, my question, well, I'll wait and yeah, yeah, discuss yeah. with you later when I talk. <laughs> yeah, go <laughs> ahead. Well, you are certainly more explanation of this observable. Right here, so, uh, yeah. You can compare to so this is vacuum so indeed we should focus mostly on the, on the domain in which that is low which is more under control in this framework because it's PQCB uh, and you see that when you include uh, uh, well both the modification of the phase space and also the minimum radiations you don't see much and it's mainly because the BDM PSD emissions which mostly occur at large angles they are uh, suppressed by the energy weighting, and you are only sensitive to relatively hard emissions, which, happen, which have an energy of order of omega c, and which happens at an angle given by theta c. So you see this, that explains this very small band uh, around the theta c angles. Uh, but it's a very mild effect, and you, you don't see much. So what we observe on the other hand is that once you start to include the, also a, a realistic initial hard spectrum for the the underlying that art process, you see a strong effect due to, again, energy loss. So at large angles, uh, you see a suppression because uh, I think it's the same physics, more or less, you have when, you, when, you, when you have prongs which, uh, which are large theta angle, it certainly comes from uh, jets with, uh, which has a richer substructure, which, have, uh, which has lost more energy than jets with a small theta uh, angle. So we see a suppression uh, on, in addition at that angle. This is the same selection bias as causes this is a barren narrowing in the uh, right. Energy. Yes, and this is this is confirmed by uh, analytic estimation. Yeah. So I, I that uh, Joao did so he basically he implemented the PSD quenching weight method. Uh, all the energy loss is uh, is. Um, that, this, is within, the, this is within a jet. But I noticed that you have the quark mass, uh, the big quark mass. This this heavy. This is a heavy quark, MD? heavy quark jet. No, 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 the bypass. Oh, the bypass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's that's uh, massless jets, uh, like quarks and fluids. Mm -hmm. There is no atomization, so it's pure partonic level. Okay, so now uh, let's look at uh, the new uh, version of the code, which also includes uh, the another PT to the fourth tail, as well as as well as the GLB emissions. And you see that there, especially because it's a low scale, you, you do observe uh, a relatively significant enhancement of large theta splittings. And I think this is related to, to the fact that even though there is still this bias effect for energy energy regulator, it is less pronounced because of the energy weight, so the fact that you uh, uh, weight all pairs by the energy. And is it actually, this is. Uh, um, so your V1, V2 essentially is with result the scattering. Yes, exactly. The V1 is uh, just multiple of scattering, so Gaussian, Gaussian uh, broadening, and the blue curve is with a one over PT to the fourth tail. Okay, so you could say, well, it's, it's not a big effect, but still, it's, so it's log scale, and also it's uh, you, you st we still have uh, many things which are not included. Uh, and especially stuff which happens at large angles like soft emissions, medium response, and so on. So uh, we, 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 in order to maybe say more optimistic stuff uh, with this uh, observable, we came uh, up with um, say an improved version of the energy energy correlator, improved with respect to the, this goal of seeing half similar half scattering in, in the quenching. It's a, it's an improved version because it's it's supposed to get rid of uh, a soft physics by imposing on top of uh, uh, the standard procedure to uh, measure energy energy collectors, it also imposes a PT cut on the subject. So it's, it's a subject based uh, uh, energy, energy, energy collector. So what you do is you decluster the jet following the hard branch and you correlate uh, the, the two subjects at each step with the weight 
which is the, the same for then for as a particle level definition, but you correlate them only if they satisfy this kind of condition. So 80, uh, uh, the relative, relative 80 of those two subjects must be larger than 80 cut. And by choosing 80 cut uh, sufficiently high, you should be not sensitive to soft physics. And you see that, so now I'm plotting the energy energy equator not on, lo on the log scale to highlight my point. Uh, so I'm cheating a little bit, but you see that when you go from no half scattering to half scattering, you get indeed an announcement of a large theta G split. And this is, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, optimistic mistake because uh, with uh, this, this type of uh, observable, uh, you, are, you know that even if you are at, at large angles, you have already removed all the soft contamination. And I think this kind of observable should also be studied from an experimental point of view, for instance, by looking at how it behaves when you embed this observable in a, in a, in a real, realistic background to see if indeed you can rest, reconstruct the, the signal uh, more efficiently than with uh, standard uh, energy energy correlate. So, Paul, okay, can we pause here a moment because yes. I think you're scooping a lot of my ideas. So, what is what, is, what are you exactly doing here in the loop? Uh, so, so I, I should I should say to really uh, 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 be more precise. So, so this idea so is is this based on the paper that we have uh, with the draw. Uh, uh, I was discussing with, with Zhao actually <laughs> <laughs> like two months ago. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, so yeah, it's, it's what you exactly do? So we what we do? So we we declutter the jet following the hard branch that you can do it also fully uh, recursively. And at each step, you you correlate, you, you measure the relative angle between the two subjects. You put it in the histogram with a weight given by. Uh, so is that the same? I was not aware of this, uh, <laughs> but what we what we do here is not uh, we, we try to compute it in, in, in PQCD and to no, which is great. Yes, I, all I can do is Monte Carlo. Yes. Okay, so very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And that. Yeah. All right. So is, is there any conflict of paternity? Uh, no, I no. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I discussed it with Joe and Jan actually open. But the other thing one can do which I think would be great, and that's a question to you if you can calculate it. You can basically follow the primary load plane and calculate the EECs uh, exclusively for pairs that belong to one or the other subject, or pairs that are crossing the two subjects. Ah, are so we are talking about particles within those subjects. Yes. It's a variation on, on, on this. Okay, but I think that's more difficult to compute. Uh, but yeah, we have to think about it. So this is this is really related to the discussion that we had last week. So because you, you need there are many versions of this type of uh, subject-based energy regulators, so you can also. So I got, I had two. So. Well, you can also do fully uh, recursively, not following only the other one. Right. That's right. You, uh, the other thing is you can recluster your jet exclusively with the subjects with the given R, etc. Ah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. So then so we would need some like, help in how to interpret that object. And right. of those. Right. But here, my, my, my message is not about, uh, I mean, it's partially about this observable, which could be interesting for you because maybe it's very sensitive to that one. That I'm not going to talk about that. It's, it's more about the fact that maybe with that observable, you can also see uh, uh, the one of the to the four tail, right? Axis effect of this type of physics. All right. So, uh, sorry. Uh, more or less. <laughs> Four minutes. Four minutes. So yeah, so I'm, I'm just to, to conclude, so I've presented uh, a new version of the code, uh, which describes the evolution of the jets in the specific medium, including now uh, similar scattering contributions. So I, I, I've tried to emphasize that uh, some structural observables uh, could be disappointing for this search of uh, uh, molar type scatterings, that are mostly sensitive to energy loss. Uh, of course, so, Peter, you, 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 you will agree with me. So, acoplanarity is a uh, very good observable, uh, but unfortunately, within our framework, we cannot compute That's what it. we're trying to figure out whether it's good or not. So. Well, I mean, I think it, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, at, at least it's, uh, it's, it's a, a very, good starting point. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately, we cannot start with this starting point because we don't have the large angles of emissions, which are 
crucial to describe the TV based life. So it cannot complete it. So uh, since, since we, we were working on these energy, energy collectors and the effect of energy loss on them, uh, I've tried to, to, to understand if they could also be useful for the physics and turned out that uh, they could be chromite. And yeah, so that is, these are future plans. So one of them is we need to include uh, large numbers of emissions to be able to compare with uh, Alice and star data and acoplanarity. Uh, reduce the number of uh, free parameters. We have, we have this uh, coupling for the minimum used emissions, which uh, is a free parameter now, but uh, in principle, uh, it's, it should be given on PQCD. So it, that's, that's why I want to also uh, incorporate when you take an effect, effect in, the, in the cascade equation, in, in turbulent cascade equations that I have been discussing. And also include a more realistic description of the geometry of the collision uh, to, to maybe solve this uh, sharp transition that. Uh, you, you very uh, uh, nicely uh, <laughs> mentioned in the beginning of the talk. Yes. So, last question. Uh, last in this. Wait, no, no, I got it. So this almost done. I got it. So, I got it. Where is this uh, famous EMO's cross for this planetary uh, recording? In, in, in the medium or? Yeah. I always use that to, to highlight the energy of the correct. Uh, the one with atomization and yeah. uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, for well, the medium, uh, my, you also have that, right? My, my so, uh, boot plot is this one. <laughs> it does not. It does. It does. It's very interesting. Right. The 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 yeah, most plot. Yeah, 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 still on it. <laughs> so where's the, where's your your comparison? It's uh, this. Uh, yeah. Him and Carlota has this like plot of enhancement yeah. at large angles. Ah, the bump. You mean right. the bump at large angles? Yes. yes. You, right. You so know, you don't don't have have. I mentioned that we don't have that because his medium, his uh, small angle is also modified. Right. So I, I, I have a, I have a yeah. slide so on this. On what's this the bump. reason? Yeah. So indeed, we, we can have a bump if uh, because I mean the calculation uh, they they use this uh, modified uh, speed. This modified splitting function inside the medium, but we claim that this this uh, formula so it's made it's valid in the semi hard approximation when the fraction of the when the z fraction is, is large. And if you include this correction in the calculation, so when we play this game in the Monte Carlo, we did get a bump. Okay. But this bump is considerably reduced both by energy loss effect and also by and also by uh, uh, the contribution from BDM PSD radiations, which are not. Uh, is it that is included that already in your simulation? I mean, your, your, I thought your simulation include this medium induced branch, right? Right, but not. Oh, in, not not vacuum. You don't include, but you do have vacuum, right? Uh, we don't modify the first splitting, the first vacuum light splitting in the cascade. This is what this this uh, enhancement uh, comes from. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Yet. If, if you <laughs> want to comment, uh, but but, but you, you, in your calculation, you have vacuum. Yes, and medium PSD. You also have uh, medium induced. Right. But this medium used, even though they are emitted at large angles, they don't contribute too much. And also the medium are... induced one will definitely uh, manage a small angle yes. much faster than the vacuum. Exactly, exactly. So that's why if you add them two together, that's why you see the vacuum and then another bump coming from the medium induced. So why don't you have that too in your? You mean small angles or large angles? The, the bump? I'm talking about transition from the vacuum in a small angle mm -hmm. to yeah. dominate, yeah. dominate medium into a large angle. Right. So why don't you have that in your calculation? I thought you have both, right? You have medium, you have medium induced. Right, but, uh, but uh, so, so the calculation is such that in the end, uh, energy loss at large angles dominates mm -hmm. the super you don't see the bump oh, anymore because it's really suppressed <laughs> by the, the effect of uh, energy loss. <laughs> Peter has a point. Yeah, no, I just want to make a quick generic comment about observables. You're talking about equal and the EEC and the KT. Um, I think we have to think perhaps think we have to perhaps collectively step back from this. You know, this is the one and consider them collectively. So if within one calculational framework, you can provide predictions or calculations for an incoplanarity observable that's being measured 
and an EC, those are always being measured, and a KT, those are always being measured. And I have the tools to put that together in a, you know, in a kind of comprehensive way with agnostic comparison. And um, I think that's, we, we have to start, start thinking about this as kind of a, a multi-messenger. You know, it's, a, it's the same scattering physics we're trying to go after three different ways. I think much more will be learned by trying to come at it from multiple angles than just choosing one observable and saying this is the one. Right, so uh, that's why on my to-do list, there is really this, uh, the ambition to improve on the vacuum part of the shower to be able to describe a total energy. Sure, sure. Well, I got, I got your message. Can I get back to your discussion about the effect, what you, what you call more uh, effect and um, scattering? You know, this is, uh, yeah. No, I'll see you Thursday. See you, see you. Thank you. No, the, 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 the okay. last one. Maybe let's formally close the seminar and then we can have more discussion. But I didn't have a chance to say for me. Thanks to Paul for the seminar. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so let's close it now and we can have. Uh, oh, you don't close, if you close it, then I need to stop. Okay. No, no, no. We can have more discussion.